Hi all. Today's instructive game will be taken from last year's British Championship. I should really be starting to prepare for the Championship because I have qualified this year. So I'm looking at some of the most um, dangerous players. And Hebden, Mark Hebden is a grandmaster. He's one of them. In this game, he was playing against Peter Sore in last year's Championship. So he kicked off with D4. And Peter Sore perhaps wanted to play a King's Indian. But Hebden is known for playing Knight F3 now. And um, the instructive part of this game, I feel, is how Hebden made use of the E6 square. So we'll call it E6 control. After G6, Hebden played Knight C3. And I would really like to know what to play as black here. So I'll try and do another game next where Hebden perhaps didn't fare so well against a higher rated opponent. Here his opponent, Peter Sore. Um, is around 2350 and so Hebden was outrating him being at 2540 but uh, what does you know what does the 2300 player do against this kind of setup from white Peter Sore played d6 maybe d5 is more accurate in some way after e4 white does seem to have a comfortable game so bishop g7 now h3 so Hebden's kind of using this system in a positional way, stopping any bishop g4s, so his d4 is not going to be under fire. Now a6 is played, so that's quite an interesting move. Perhaps tempting white to try and play a4, but then it would weaken b4, and then maybe black can play a5. But um, Hebden actually just plays bishop c4. After castles, he now just plays e5. So let's have a look at taking on e5 here. Now queen takes d1, king takes d1. Rook d8, king e1. Is white better here? Knight e8. White might be slightly better. It's not that great for black. Um, but it might be playable. So in the game, actually, the knight retreated. And rib crash gives a big advantage now. Well, much bigger advantage than that line. Um, 0 0.60 to white. So white's got a comfortable position, it seems. Queen e2, and that's quite a dangerous form pawn. Now, well, advanced pawn in the opponent's territory. And in fact, the only way Sore sort of got rid of it after this bishop g5 uh, and bishop f5, Hebden castled. Um, but Sore was preparing f6. The problem with f6 is the e6 square, as we're about to see. So f6 now, Hebden took and retreated the bishop right back to c1. So that e6 square is slightly weakened because of that f6 move. And we're going to see now, now after knight a5, the bishop actually goes to e6. So Hebden doesn't mind even swapping off um, the bishops there. And now he just probes that e6 square. After knight g5, he's threatening things like knight f7. So black tries to defend with queen f6. Now rook e1. And now we see Hebden's maintaining that control of the e6 square. And white's advantage has actually gradually... Um, increased over the last few moves. After this knight f6, Hebden doesn't mind simplifying, because now, after these simplifications, two rooks against knight, he's got a big clear advantage. After f4, he now kicks that knight, and now c4, he's got this lovely occupation of e6. So he just grew that small advantage, and now he translates this advantage into invading with his rooks. So um, first exchanging off a pair of rooks, so even more simplified, but his advantage is nagging here after rook e7, rook e6 now. So these, this pawn is under fire. So black protected that. But now rook e8 again. Now knight c, c5 was played, so why not rook f8 here? If rook f8, rook e7 winning the knight now, so it's uh, changed considerably. There's no rook f7 defense, so that's the subtle difference. So white's blasting through now with this rook e8. There's, there's hardly any um, defense against this. So now Sore's position slips even more after knight e6. And white's just winning in this endgame. Creating a passed a pawn now. And it's all over. Basically this looks like just a technique now. Hebden's just um, a clear pawn up, a very strong d pawn up. And he just guides that d pawn now. And after this move, it, black has no defence. Um, just that, that pawn is winning more material. So if rook takes d7, rook c6. If rook takes e6, then um, rook takes c6. So this looks um, busted. Let's have a look in overview and summary at this uh, British Championship game from last year. So um, 
Peter Surrey probably didn't play the most aggressive system against this Hebden system. White guided a, a small advantage here and increased it. So the, the chance here was after e5, perhaps d takes was the best, according to Rivka. So d takes, queen takes d1. King takes d1 is recommended here. Rook d8, king e2, knight e8. So is this really so bad for black, this position? Say knight c6 here, knight e1, bishop f5. Actually, Ribka gives still a slight advantage for white. There's this outpost pawn. I don't know, it's passive for black. This this knight's passive. But maybe this is better than the game. Maybe black could try and play for a draw somehow. Um, so in the game, we saw this just increase of advantage, really. Black's position just became more and more uh, positionally suspect, especially after this f6. So this e6 square was weakened. And this exchange on e6 really didn't help because now white got that, that knight to e6. And he almost started to strangle black here after this bishop g5. Black's almost running out of moves here. So Peter Surrey decided to try and simplify, but it really didn't help because uh, white was able to just use the e-fold now to infiltrate. And there was this nice little subtle move of... Um, playing here rook e6 so this prompted king h7 and then black hasn't got a rook f7 now after this ch this rook e8 after rook f8 rook e7 will be winning this knight now Just quickly show you that so um so that's that's meant that white was increasing the advantage decisively and it, the rest is just a technique now for hebden so um, we'll try and look at another game where black played more aggressively against this system because this actually is also part of my, my British Championship preparation. I really need to know what to do against these guys and Hebden is one of the guys I don't really want to be um, positionally murdered. Okay, thanks very much. Please leave any comments on YouTube.